Pokemon Legends Arceus is the newest game in the Pokemon franchise. It's also the biggest evolution the franchise has ever seen in a single game, and that's not just a pun. The changes to the franchise introduced in this game are plentiful and intensive, not unlike a Caterpie evolving into a Metapod. As a fair warning, this review will contain minor spoilers for the game, not the plot, just some of the new Pokemon that weren't in the promotional material. If you don't want to see that, skip to this timecode to avoid spoilers. And for everyone else still with us, let's get into it. Now, the setup for this game is basically that of an isekai. If you're unfamiliar with that term, well, an isekai is a plague. I, I mean a blight. I mean a fantasy subgenre where your protagonist gets themselves trapped in some other world. It literally translates as different world. I believe this game actually shares the same premise with the isekai in another world with my smartphone, which I have not read. But I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what the setup is, because in Pokemon Legends Arceus you are transported to the world of the distant past with nothing but your cell phone and, thankfully, the clothes on your back. While I am sick of Isekai's prevalence in anime and light novels, the concept actually works pretty well for Pokemon. Being in a setting with very low level tech while trying to survive and research all these Pokemon is actually a really refreshing take on the franchise. I guess what I'm trying to say is that Isekai is okay sometimes, as long as it isn't one of those really high concept ones like that time I reincarnated in another world, but I'm a cheese ball and the only thing I brought with me is the Philharmonic Orchestra. As for the actual story, I liked it. I didn't love it, but it had its moments. The story never overstayed its welcome, and although there were some characters who had minor arcs, you never really got too into that type of stuff. And even though you had a cell phone, the only one you get calls from is God and not your 16 annoying friends. Really gives a new meaning to a calling from God. I don't really want too much in the way of a story from Pokemon games though. I personally think Pokemon games work best when they go lighter on the story, and this one managed to be light while having likable characters and a story that wasn't stupid like the last game, where the villain's motivation was literally, GUYS, WE'RE GONNA RUN OUT OF ENERGY IN 10,000 YEARS, WHY DOESN'T ANYONE CARE? But really, the story is a medium through which we're introduced to the gameplay, which is the most interesting part of the game. The single biggest change is that this game takes place all on the overworld. No more transitions interrupting the flow of gameplay. And thank god for that. This change alone is so excellent, I'm mad they didn't do this years ago. The game is open world style, though not a continuous open world, as it consists of several big open areas that you can access from the game's hub, much like last year's Shin Megami Tensei 5. There are also light stealth elements now, like hiding in the grass to sneak up on Pokemon to either catch them or battle them. It makes it feel so much closer to what you might imagine being a real trainer in the Pokemon world would feel like, and opens up a lot more options for how to approach a given situation. The battles being on the open world also open up more possibilities for the battles themselves. Generation 3 saw the introduction of double battles. Generation 5, the introduction of triple battles. While Pokemon Legends Arceus introduces gangbang battles, where one Pokemon can go head to head with up to five other Pokemon. Okay, so not everything introduced in this game is good or super polished. The gangbang battles are really rough. These battles aren't too dissimilar from Generation 6's Horde battles, but these battles are much harder than Horde battles due to the removal of multi-target attacks. And to account for the new battle styles, the battles are no longer strictly turn-based, instead opting for a timeline style. You also have new options for your moves. You can perform them in normal, strong, or agile style, which will help you either move forward on the timeline but do less damage, or vice versa. This system can feel a bit jank though. Agile moves will let you act again sooner, but not if the move misses, and statuses can affect you really badly, so it can be pretty hard to actually plan what you're going to do or anticipate what's coming. I'm not a huge fan of how the battles are right now, but I think the developers can really perfect it if they use the style again in the next game. But as it is, it can sometimes feel like a crapshoot. Lastly, I'd like to talk about what everyone has probably been anticipating. The presentation. And I have to say, I actually like the art direction. It feels like with the previous game, Sword and Shield, they wanted to make the game have some sort of almost watercolor look to the game. But the game looked like crap, and it performed like crap, so it didn't really work out. This game, however, manages to accomplish this art style much better, and it actually seems to perform fairly well. Sure, there are some frame drops, and some poppin, and some texture tiling issues. I mean, come on. Look at this wall. It looks like garbage. Wait, I recognize that wall. Zoom out. H hey, that's Dark Souls 2. What the fuck? Get out of here. 
this is a Pokemon review. Now, I'm no digital foundry, but I found their performance to actually be pretty consistent. It's way better than Pokemon Sword and Shield's 12 to 20 FPS. I will say my favorite part of this game's presentation is how it gets the lighting and just how the sky looks. I'm a sucker for nice sky boxes, and here it makes the game feel so warm and inviting and just makes the world feel so vast. But I also have a confession to make. I've only been talking about the graphics in the first three quarters of the game. Don't take that to mean late game areas look worse. They don't. The issue is, once you unlock the Braviary mount and start flying around the world, the graphical issues get turned up to 11 and everything sort of turns to mush. Texture tiling, pop-in, and low poly count run rampant. On the bright side, the frame rate still seems pretty decent. So while I can't appreciate the developer's prioritized performance, gee, I wish they just could have gotten both somehow. And this isn't strictly related to the graphics, more just the presentation in general, but the game almost certainly could have been better with voice acting. It feels so awkward without it. Although, it's never as bad as the literal concert in Sword and Shield with no voice acting. It's weird too. The lips on some parts even seem to match up with what they're saying, but there's no speech. It almost gives the game a surreal feeling. I don't know, maybe they just couldn't afford it. Pokemon is a pretty niche franchise, and Game Freak is a small indie studio, so I understand. Pokemon Legends Arceus is not a perfect game, nor is it a masterpiece. There's a lot of good in it, but also a lot of flaws. Overall, however, Pokemon Legends Arceus is the best and most interesting mainline Pokemon game in over 10 years. Sure, it does have its problems in the graphics and the battles, but the game is just so much fun it overcomes all these things. I would like to call it a step in the right direction for the franchise, but I feel as if that's underselling the game as only a small amount of progress. It's a giant leap forward for the franchise and in and of itself a really fun game. Truth be told, I didn't have very high hopes for this game. Pre-release footage looked rough and when I saw the new Pokemon, well, they just looked kind of dumb. But playing the game, everything really grew on me. Yes, even you, Sneasler. I really hope they iterate and improve on this version of the franchise because I think it's a winning formula. I had a lot of fun playing and it's genuinely a pretty good game. But I still don't understand why they gave Dialga a butt plug. Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. If you're new here, remember to like and subscribe and let me know if you like this format. It's a little bit shorter, a little bit more of a first impression-y type review than I normally do. So, you know, if that's something that you're interested in seeing more of, leave a comment down below. This review was done pretty quick and dirty, but I've got another review in the works. It should be out sometime next month. For now, maybe check out some of my other videos. The channel's still pretty small right now, so every like, every subscriber, every view really helps out. And, you know, it really motivates me to keep going when I know that there's people out there enjoying my videos. That's enough for now, though. See you in the next one.